Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings. And today it's a bit different because I'm experimenting having stolen my wife's iPad, which is probably naughty, but I'll get told off later. But I just thought it might be an interesting test. Reason being that um, many years ago I was given an iPad by my, f well, when my father died, I took his iPad, to put it another way. But the trouble is that it's now so old that I can't load any apps on it. It won't do most of the things I want. And it's really a bit of a brick. But what I'm going to do is keep it because it was the old man's and I don't want to lose it. But a little while ago, my wife's tablet died. She had a nice Samsung. And we decided to replace it with this little, not very expensive, iPad. And I thought I might test it today because it's a lot easier just putting this on my desk and standing in front of it than it is trying to set up a camera on the stand that I've got here and everything else. So it's interesting. However, it does mean I'm going to have to save up my pennies and buy a new iPad, I think, because if this works, I don't think my wife will be too glad about me nicking her iPad too often. And the other thing is that um, now I'm using Eon Timeline more and Scrivener works on the iPad too. And then I can also do editing with DaVinci Resolve. So the three key things I use all the time are actually sort of iPad based rather than anything else. Anyway, today I've got a few ideas. I thought it would be interesting just to talk about some of the different types of pen that you can get for people. So I often get, I've just got to have a slurp, sorry, this is um, Twinings number 29, which is a, an Indian chai type which means it's flavoured with things like cinnamon and stuff. And it's really rather lovely. Mm. But I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at the sort of spread of costs you can look at when looking at fountain pens. And it's a difficult problem, really, talking about these things, because every time I try to talk about them, I discover that the flaming suppliers have changed again. And they've decided not to carry on with them. So I've got, for example, over on my other desk, got a delightful Pilot Metropolitan. It's, it's brilliant. Really good. And they don't do them anymore. I'm not sure they've ever done them in this country, actually. But Pilot make very good pens. They've got really nice nibs. Even the steel ones are very, very pleasant. So it's just a shame. It's disappointing that you can't buy the darn things now. So... Looking at different types of pen, you can get very cheap pens. You can get disposable pens if you're so inclined. I wouldn't recommend them. Uh, I don't think it's a very nice thought filling up landfill with more bits of rubbish, really. But there are some excellent pens, even at very low prices. So, for example, here we have a lovely little Twisby. Now the Twisby Go, this is, is a strange little pen. It looks very cheap and plasticky. But actually, it feels really nice in the hand. You can post it if you want. And filling it is a breeze, because all you do is you stick it in a bottle of ink, like that, you press the top, a plunger goes down, and when you release it, it sucks ink in, ink in. And it has a very good capacity. This is an ideal pen for people in business who want to have something, pardon my phone, who want to have something that is not expensive, so it doesn't matter if it gets lost, but which does hold a lot of ink so that when you're in meetings and so on, this thing will continue all the way through. You have a range of different colours. I've got two colours here. Um, I actually gave one of these to a young friend who quite fancied the idea of fountain pens and he wasn't sure what to try. So I gave him one of them and he's now a very enthusiastic exponent of Twisby Goes. And they're reasonably priced. They're £20. 
nowadays that's not a lot of money. Um, and they're so practical that I know of one guy who's got five of them, each with different inks in, and he just keeps them going all the time. They are very, very practical, easy little pens. For those who want to go a little bit different, perhaps looking at something that's a little more elegant, then you have the Caveco. Uh, this is a design that was made before the Second World War by the German company. And the idea is it's small in the pocket because it is very small. You can hide it in your hand, whereas something like a Twisby takes up a bit more acreage. So these things are small. But when you unscrew it, because of the very clever design, it makes a very good size in your hand. So very deceptive little pens, these. They're very simple to fill because they just take either a standard universal ink cartridge or you can buy these brilliant little cartridge converters. Let me just pull that out, which when you don't use them for a while, get quite stiff, apparently. Ugh. And also, my hand is not the strongest. Anyway, these things take very little ink. They're quite quick to run out. So they're not perfect if you're going to be going into meetings and writing for long extended periods. But the nib is really nice. They're quite juicy. They're not too wet, but they're nice. And enormously practical because you can stick them in your pocket you can stick them in a handbag doesn't matter what and they'll keep you going for a while i've got a couple of them here for example is one that i was given by cult pens a little while ago exactly the same type of pen exactly the same process but you can also buy if you want removable clips that just slide onto the pen and they're very effective they hold the pen very firmly these are a lot more expensive than the Twisbees because they're £21. £21, isn't that shocking? But if you really want to go to extremes, here's one that I bought a long time ago. This is the AL Sport, which means it's made out of aluminium. This was, I think, 40 quid when I bought it. Exactly the same principle as the plastic ones. That plastic one. But the difference with this is... It's actually made of metal, so it just feels that little bit heavier, that little bit more pleasant in the hand. Here's another one of those delightful little uh, cartridge converters. And I've, I've used this an awful lot. It is convenient to have in the pocket and it feels nice, but it is a great deal more expensive. £21, £65. Is it worth the extra money? Well... I don't know. Actually, my favourite out of all of my Cavecos still is this one, the little dark brown one, because it goes very well with my little dark brown notebook from Midori and my other leather notebooks too. So I, I'm just fond of them. So we've gone then from £20 for the Twisby to £21 for the Caveco. I would be more than happy to recommend either of those two. They're really good. Now we get on to the ones that I really, really, really like. Now, this is a very bright pen. It was given to me because I think the original purchaser thought that is just too bright for my eyesight. It is very bright and garish, but I love it. It's a Visconti Breeze. I love it for a number of reasons. One is that it's got a good, strong clip. It'll hold to your shirt pocket without problems. The other is that it has a fantastic nib. It's a medium. It's not terribly wet, but it copes with every single ink I put in it remarkably well. It'll take standard international ink cartridges or a cartridge converter like this, which is really convenient, very handy. And what I love, really, is this. It's got a magnetic cap. I love magnetic caps. 
I think they're risky if you're going into a business meeting because the temptation to sit there doing this all the time is there. I would probably find that temptation impossible to resist and I would irritate everybody in that office. But it is great. <laughs> I love these. It's very bright. It's very garish. This was my favourite pen for most of this year because it's just lovely to use. The only trouble with this is it's a bit of a leap upwards. If you're looking at the Cavecos and the Twisbees at £21 for the plastic pens, this is plastic. They have steel nibs. This has a steel nib. And yet it's £99, nearly 100 quid, so it's five times the price of the other two. But it doesn't hold as much ink as the Twisby. It holds the same as the Caveco. It's got a clip, which the Twisby hasn't got. With the Twisby, you just get this dinky little hole in the cap so that you can put it onto a lanyard or something, which isn't really ideal. But there's something about this which just feels very nice. The only complaint I have about it is that recently, as some of my viewers will know, I've got a problem with the ulnar nerve. It's got a trap in the elbow, and that means that my hand does not function properly. Hopefully I'm going to have an operation on it in the next couple of months. But because of that, I find that the section is just a little bit fat for my fingers. So it's less comfortable now than it used to be, which is odd. But if you want to get a present for someone, you're prepared to spend that little bit more. This could be the type of pen to go for. However, now I come on to a couple of pens which are getting rather higher in the value market. So the first is I've got to mention the alternative to the Visconti Breeze is one of the fabulous Homo Sapiens range. Now I got my first Bronze Age Homo Sapiens must be oh, at least 10 years ago now I should think and it's a brilliant brilliant pen. It has a medium palladium nib, which works superbly well. It's comfortable in the hand. It's made of this fabulous material that's pounded lava from Mount Etna, I think, which is then mixed with plastic or resin or rubber or something. And it creates this wonderful, almost completely unbreakable material. And now there's lots of different types. Um, a lot of them are plastic. They start at just under £500 each. Yeah, £500. And they go all the way up to £1,400 plus. Which is pretty painful to think of. Shut up, phone. So I, I find them difficult to recommend. I love them. I've got four of them. But can I actually recommend them? Not really. However, something I can recommend, and I do so at every available opportunity, is one of these. This is a Pineda. A Pineda Avatar. Now, the Viscontis were created as a company pretty much single-handedly, by Dante Del Vecchio, who is one of those guys who, if you know pens, he is the guru. He knows all about pens, and he's a lovely, lovely chap. Dante Del Vecchio had all the ideas for the Homo sapiens and various other pens, but he had a horrible split-up with Visconti some years ago. He had a business partner who was the guy behind the money, and they split up badly. So 
After a few months of wondering what to do, Dante was grateful to accept an offer from Pineda, which is a very ancient Italian luxury brand, and they took him in to create some new fountain pens and writing materials for them, which he's done. This is the Pineda avatar. I'm trying to remember where the camera is on this iPad now. And you can possibly just make out it says Pineda here along the band. And then on the back, it's got uh, a cityscape of Florence, where Dante lives. It's got a nice, oh, got a hair sticking out of the top there. It's got a nice clip that's quite strong, mechanical, which is functioned to look like a sort of um, quill. It's got a delightful magnetic cap. Again, I love those magnetic caps. But what's even better about this is this is a particular type of avatar. The normal avatar looks rather like this and costs £135. This is a special type. This is a twin tank touchdown. The normal avatar has a cartridge converter or standard international link cartridge. This has this fabulous, massive ink reservoir which takes more ink than I can get through in a week, even with all the writing I do. And it is superb. It's quick and easy to fill. It is just a stunning pen to use. The standard avatar with the cartridge converter, £135. This with the twin tank touchdown, £225. Is it worth that extra money? Ye gods, yes. Yes without any shadow of doubt. And in fact, if I had the option, I would not bother to buy the standard avatar. I would save my pennies till I could afford one of these. They are fantastic. Absolutely superb to write with. It's got that slightly narrower section, which I find much more comfortable to use. The pen is that little bit longer and slimmer. Just putting it next to the breeze here to demonstrate that. I think you can see here how much fatter the breeze is compared to the Avatar. It's not the prettiest resin. No, it's not. But this stuff is just about bulletproof. Um, apparently on the internet, I'm going to see if I can find a, um, a copy of it, but there are YouTube videos, I think made with Goulet pens, where Dante Del Vecchio demonstrates how strong this resin is by whacking an avatar with a hammer and failing to break it. This stuff is astonishingly resilient. I ha haven't actually tried to break this with a hammer yet. Do you want me to, to do that? Because I'm not going to. I love this pen far too much. I love the cap. I love the ink capacity. I love the mechanism that fills it, which is simple and much more effective than the Homo sapiens filling mechanisms. And, you know, it's 225 quid. The Homo sapiens starts at under 500, but only just under 500. So you can get two of these for one Homo sapiens. Or, sorry to mention this, this is a specific nib that Dante has created and it is his flexible nib and it is gold of course and it costs another 200 odd pounds so it doubles the cost of the pen. I can't state that it's worth double the money compared to the standard steel semi-flex nib that they can provide. All I can say is this is one of my two favourite nibs that I have ever used. It is a flexible nib and it gives a beautiful impact on paper. You can either write with it really, really um, slowly and carefully, in which case you get a wonderful effect, or you can write a little faster, in which case you get the same impact that you would expect with a fine nib. It is just magnificent to use. It feels glorious in the hand. It feels wonderful on paper. It's superb. The only thing comparable 
is the nib I have in this. Now you can't buy one of these. I am extremely sorry to say this is These two are my two favourite pens of all time. This is the Conway Stewart Drake. I've spoken about it before, but I'm still going to talk about it again briefly. It has a picture of the Golden Hind, which is not going to show itself there. You can just see it there, I think. It's got an etching, laser etching of the Golden Hind, which was the ship owned by Francis Drake. And this pen is the Drake, as I say, made to commemorate him. It's got this lovely guilloche, I think it's pronounced guilloche, um, surface, which is perfectly good, actually. It means that you can grip the pen very nicely. It is solid silver. It's a very massive pen to feel in the hand. But the lovely thing is, when you write with it, it doesn't feel massive at all. It feels just glorious and light and delightful. But this nib is one of my favourite nibs of all time. It's a standard Conway Stewart, modern type, so it's quite a lot longer. And they've made this into a semi-flex nib. It's solid gold, so it costs, like the Pineda, about 250, 200 odd quid for the nib alone. Both of them about the same. And that's mainly the price of gold. But this one has been made from... A standard medium and been ground down to a stub. So the nice thing about a stub is it has a sort of a flat top to it. So when you're writing, if you've got your paper and the flat top is going down, it produces a fat line. But when you write sideways, it produces a very thin line. And a stub is one of my favourite types. That's why I've got stub nibs in my um, Twisbees. But this is easily the best stub nib I've ever tried. Now you can see here, I hope, the slight line variation. So if you look at this F, you can see the fat downstroke and then the thin upstroke. If you look at this, you can see the fat downstroke going to a very slim upstroke. And it makes your writing look that little bit nicer, I think. Then again, the Pineda has a very similar impact, but it's just because the nib is so flexible. So that is a quick run through of the different types of pen that I would personally happily recommend. If you're looking to buy someone a Christmas present or getting something for yourself, if you're looking at low budget things, these are about the best, I think. The Twisby Go or the Coveco Sport. I love them both. They've, these have both had an extensive amount of use. If you want to spend just that little bit more, you can go to an aluminium version of the Sport. This is the AL Sport and it's lovely. And it looks nice, I think. So you have those as options. If you want to go that little bit further, there seems to be a bit of a demarcation point. You can get various other types, but really the next, I think, cost point means you're going up to 100 quid. And for that, definitely one of these Viscontis or an Avatar from Pineda. The Avatar from Pineda is 135, the Visconti is 99. So not that dissimilar. If you're spending 100 pounds, an extra 35 quid doesn't make a lot of odds really. But those would be the two that I would go for. If you can afford an extra 100 on top, as far as I'm concerned, that is the one. Or if you want to go a little bit further, you can get at one of any number of Conway Stewarts. I would not personally necessarily recommend a Churchill for someone who hasn't already tried it and loved it because they are rather massive. But one of my favourite pens for carrying all day every day is the Conway Stewart 
Indiana Jones, which is just a delightful small pen, fits in a shirt pocket without any problem. And it's one of those pens that I would carry with me daily because it's just a delight to use. It's lovely. When I was doing a lot of letter writing, I started out using this. I moved on to using various other types. And then I ended up using the Conway Stewart Indiana Jones because it was just small, light, easy to use and a delight to fill as well because it had a lever on the side. So you just put it into your ink, pull the lever down, release the lever and it sucks ink up into a rubber sack internally. Delightful pen to use. So you have got quite a variety of different types and different price ranges to look at. I'll put some notes on them all down at the bottom. And apart from that, if you are happy with this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, share it, tell your friends about it, run down the screen naked screaming, oh, Whitley Wooderings is great. Actually, don't do that. It might upset the horses. But do feel free to do all that. If you're keen on supporting the channel, then you can always go to the Patreon site. You can oh, do all the things. They're down the bottom. Do what you do what you want. In the meantime, I've got to crack on because I've got to get back to the next book I've got to write. I've got to write a review of another person's book. I've got to analyse a friend's outline for a TV series. Don't know how I can do that because I'm not particularly good with TV, but still, I'll try. And I've got to get back to my own book. And first of all, I've got to see how I can get all this stuff off this iPad, which could be quite a challenge. Wish me luck. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. I'm going back to my cup of tea now. See you soon. Bye.